Hello, in this video, I'm gonna go over how to grow some popular backyard mints. We're going to do peppermint, apple mint, chocolate mint, mojito mint, ginger mint, strawberry mint, and pineapple mint. These plants are hardy, lots of health benefits, and they come in lots of flavors and different shapes. They're also great if you like gardening with kids, as they can tolerate a bit of a pruning, and it makes the kids excited with getting involved with the gardening process. They can help make a cup of tea. Okay, so let's get started about peppermint. As for growing conditions, these plants are not picky. They'll even grow in clay. My plants are in nice, dark, rich soil, as you can see here, giving them a beautiful, lush look. They're even under a pine tree, hence the pine needles, and they're still doing well. They do like part sun, part shade. They will do okay in full sun. A lot of sun gives a nice upright bushy look. A lot of shade will give you more of a sprawling plant. Too much shade and you'll get a weak plant. So mint is a hardy perennial herb growing zones 3 to 11. Depends on the type, sometimes the zones vary, but generally it's 3 to 11. And they're very invasive. These stolons or runners can grow above ground or underground and makes this plant um, compete with the other plants for for space. So I recommend putting them in a container. This is a whiskey barrel. Uh, it has a large volume so it can establish for the winter months. Other options are taking a container such as this, you cut out the bottom, put the mint in here and place it in your garden. The mint should be able to survive the harsh winters and it's stolen should be contained or its roots and runners so that it can't spread everywhere else in your garden. Another option Take some garden edging. Have the mint plant be surrounded by the garden edging just to keep all its stolons from invading the rest of your garden. These stolons growing out of the whiskey barrel here, if they touch the ground, they will root. Something to be mindful as you watch your mint grow in your garden. These stolons also make great if you cut them and add them to water as they will root. So that's a great way to share your plants. Division of the mint can also be done by just cutting some of it off and having some of the root and passing it on. Just to show you how invasive mint really is, my garden has been augered and removed of mint and every year I get pieces coming back from the root fragments. Here is a stolen coming across and creating more and more mint plants. Here it is in my garlic patch, but it keeps popping up all throughout. Very invasive, so be careful where you plant it. Wine barrel here or whiskey barrel. I did even put a wooden divider as some mints, like the apple mint, the invasiveness, can outcompete with my chocolate mint. So I even try to keep the mints separate from the mints. When it comes to pets, mint can be beneficial, but only in small amounts. It even helps with their bad breath. If a pup eats too much mint and you find them to be garden munchers, I recommend binding it up like this. If they're not garden munchers, I actually recommend planting it beside their doghouse Fleas don't like the strong aroma of mint, and it'll actually help repel them. So a classic characteristic of the mint plant probably is the square stem. Although hard to see, the stem of the plant is actually more square than it is circular. And that is very common on most all mint plants. The leaves are also alternating. So as you can see, if I get a very aerial shot, they go up, they go across, they go up, they go across. These alternating leaf patterns maximize the sun exposure so that the leaves don't block out from the leaf below. You can see by the serrated edge and the point, most varieties have this trait. The flowers of the mint plant, they stem off, well the stem, right at where the leaf joins onto the stem. Sometimes the mint plants, depending on the variety, will shoot up a beautiful, either white, light pink, or light purple, small flower. These flowers are edible. I don't know if I would consider them desirable, as the small parts will come out of a tea sieve. So I'd recommend using a tea bag to collect all the small bits so that you don't end up with imploding in your tea. They do make nice garnishes for salads, and on the side of a plate, if you cut this whole thing off. By cutting off flowering plants, you let the plant focus its energy on growing and not the flowering, as you want to produce as much leafy greens as you can until the winter months. 
I do let some go into flower, so it'll have some pollinators come to the garden, and it adds a little bit of color. But typically I try to keep the flowers to a minimum on the plants. Most plants, since they are hybrids, they actually won't produce any seeds from the flowers. Um, so don't expect to get a, a good harvest of seeds for, for planting new mint from your hybrid mint okay, plants. Okay, so let's get into some of the varieties I grow here at home. This one here is my number one. It's peppermint. Peppermint is a hybrid of water mint and spearmint. It can grow about 18 to 36 inches tall, as you can see this one. Note that there's a bit of purple on the stem here, one characteristic of the peppermint plant, along with the classic serrated leaf, very visible veins, coming to a point, alternating leaf pattern. Peppermint has one of the strongest levels of menthol, and just the Mmm, you can just smell it by breaking off one leaf. I use this tea mostly for um, making my own tea. I just come out and you can just pick some off. You can chop it up to maximize the exposure to get the menthol out. Put it in a tea bag and stick it right in your cup. Makes a beautiful cup of tea. This plant is also good not only for teas but for cold teas as well. Uh, very refreshing for a nice fruit punch cocktail. As for its health benefits, it's known for relaxing effects due to its strong aromas. It can also help with indigestion, nausea, sore throats, colds, cramps, headaches, reduce inflammation, and help with fatigue. Its high menthol content also has antibacterial properties, helping to remove bad breath. Just chewing on a leaf, sometimes I just do that after a cup of coffee, just to help freshen your breath. This is probably one of the most popular mints you will see growing in people's gardens. Here's my second runner-upper. This one here is chocolate mint. Almost completely indistinguishable from peppermint. You got your alternating leaf pattern, same sort of beautiful lime to rich green color, purpley stem growing here. This is a younger plant. The flavor is almost identical as well. There is a slight difference. So maybe a little less pepperminty. If you had to have one mint plant in your garden, I would probably choose the chocolate mint as the flavor is just slightly less intense. Maybe they call it chocolate mint because it would be better paired with chocolate. But it does well in hot or cold teas or in salads as well. Also contains the same medicinal type properties. But whether it actually tastes like chocolate, well, I'll leave that to your imagination. Apple mint or woolly mint or round leaf mint as it's otherwise known is another one of my favorites in the garden. It has a much more subtle taste in tea. Um, one thing that makes this mint really different is yes, the fact that the leaf is much larger, still serrated edging, still coming to a point, still prominent veins. It's a little more lime green in color but probably the number one characteristic difference is how fuzzy it is. It is an extremely soft little plant here. Actually, I say little, but it gets to be one of the tallest. Although hard to tell, its stem too is square shape. It grows a white to light pink flower by the end of summer, early fall. This plant has a slight minty apple taste. Whether I'd actually say apple, maybe a bit more fruity. Uh, it does have a lot less menthol. It's not as strong, so this is this is nice for say a, a drink, whether hot or cold. The one reason I would hesitate for salad is due to its really fuzzy nature. Its texture is kind of meh on the tongue. When using this mint, I recommend uh, chopping it up very finely, as it is a thick leaf. So to get all the flavor out uh, when steeping it, I would um, chop it to increase your exposure. So this mint is supposed to be good for breaking down fat and accelerating your metabolism um, to help you get into a better state of health. It's supposed to have antiseptic and cancer fighting properties. The crushed leaves of this plant are also supposed to help with wasp things and bug bites with its natural cooling effects. Now on to lemon balm. I call it lemon mint, but the official lemon mint is a slightly different plant looks a bit more like savory. This lemon balm, as you can see, has a slight, is a smaller leaf. There's serration on the sides here. Um, does still come to a point, but it's more of a blunt shaped leaf. 
this beautiful lemon fragrance. Just phenomenal smell. This makes a beautiful fruity tea, especially for those who are wishing to get away from sugars. Having this nice sweet mint taste in your tea uh, is a great alternative where you don't need to add that sugar. So it makes it a healthy tea. Its size can get quite large, as you can see here in this picture. Although it doesn't have as many runners or stolons as other mint plants, I do trust it to grow in my garden. Its size does get a little overbearing and it will spread, but more like a bush. The uses for this tea are many, as the leaf is quite thin, so you can just eat it, hot or cold teas or salads, but one thing I use with this tea that I don't with a lot of other mints is uh, marinades for chicken, especially, or fish. Chop it up finely, put it with some oil, and it is excellent marinade. This does well, also added with drinks on the patio, whether you're making mojitos and you want to add a, uh, an additional flavor, or just a tropical punch for your kids. This is a fun plant to add fun lemon flavors with. This plant is known to also help repel insects with its strong lemony smell. Kind of acts in the same way as citronella. Now on to mojito mint. This mint, really similar to spearmint, originated in Cuba. And you can see it's got a almost crumpled, very veiny leaf, serrated edging, and coming to a point. This plant can get quite tall and does well with a good pruning. The mint of this plant isn't as strong as it doesn't have as high as a methyl content as, as my peppermint plant, which makes it more pleasant in drinks as it doesn't have such an overpowering taste. This is the classic and original plant that makes the true mojito and is a very pleasant plant to have growing on your patio. Next, we're gonna talk about ginger mint. As you can see, it is in flower right now. I would say the ginger mint is not necessarily taste like ginger, but more of an oregano taste, but it does contain lots of health properties. It's very small, fine, thin leaf, makes it palatable, that it doesn't require a lot of chewing and it's not overly fuzzy. Its invasiveness is also very high, so I would keep it contained. This mint is a cross between corn mint and spearmint. Other names of this mint include slender mint or scotch mint, so you might find it under that tag as well. If you're not a big minty fan, but you're into more herbal teas, I would try this one. This one would be great mixed with other teas as well, like say black tea or Rowie Bose, as you can combine the flavors and it's not so overpowering with mint. Another unique characteristic about the ginger plant is that it often shows itself with small yellow variegation on the leaves, which is one of the reasons how it got its name. This funky little mint here is pineapple mint. It is a cultivar of apple mint. So sometimes it is also known as variegated apple mint. Um, you can see the difference here with the white edging and the crumply, almost truffled look. Uh, it gives it a very unique appearance, which makes it a nice garnish on a dish or uh, in a drink. I wouldn't actually say it's very pineapple-y in taste. It does have uh, a more citrusy and less of a mint taste sort of combo. Um, so I grow this mint not really for its flavor, but really just for its looks when I add it to a dish where I have mint in it or to like a cocktail as it looks very uh, enticing. If you do see the uh, parent plant, apple mint, coming through this, uh, pinch that off as it is a more aggressive grower than pineapple mint and will uh, take over the plant. This is a very young plant, and this, these leaves here show more what a, an adult plant would resemble as it gets older. And last but least, here we have strawberry mint. The finest leaf of all the mint plants that I have growing in my garden. This little guy actually gets pretty tall, so don't be deceived by the small leaves. It's got a beautiful lime green color and the classic mint characteristics. When you touch it, it does have a nice, fruity sort of minty smell. The actual taste, would I say it's strawberry? Not really. It does well though in a nice uh, tea or a, in a nice cold cocktail on, on the deck. Pinching up a little bit of this and adding it to your drink 
makes for a pleasant experience. Now on to harvesting the mint. When you get a nice bushy plant like this, it is a good time to harvest so that you don't let it get woody. Going down several leaf sections, take a clipping. So you have several inches of the plant. Try and take a clipping while leaving a junction. As you can see here on this plant, where I have taken the clipping, you will now have other shoots coming up and making your plant a little more bushy with more new growth. Making more sweet plants for your tea. Keeping it pruned frequently will help with new growth and keep your plant very flavorful throughout the summer. In the drier months, as summer progresses, your plant will shoot up and start to go into flower. That's where you should cut it down and start with the hanging process. This will give you tea throughout the winter months. When it comes time for hanging the mint, Make sure you cut the mint plant so it's just a couple inches above the ground. This is the part that will remain in the ground and it'll just mulch on top of that and this plant will survive the winter months. The top part, this is what you'll want to hang to dry. Next I'll show you how to hang it. Using a piece of twine, I'll often hang it in my garden shed for the first little bit to let all the leaves sort of get a good air. I have a piece of twine tied to a rope that will slide back and forth so I can adjust the spacing as needed depending on how bushy the plant is. Here I have a slip knot tied at the bottom. Taking a single plant, I will put it through the slip knot up to the first leaf junction and then it can just tighten. This will allow the plant to hang and give it adequate airflow and just continue to do these steps all the way along. If the plants are thinly leafed, you could group two or three stems together. Not enough airflow will result in your leaves going dark and moldy. Another way to dry mint is to use the oven with a cookie sheet, some parchment, place them on the cookie tray. And set them in the oven at a low temperature to dry. But of course the best is chopped fresh into tea. Well that wraps up the end of my mint video for all my garden mints and how to grow them. If you have any questions please write them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, have fun gardening everyone and enjoy your mint.